a packed Phoenix Rising FC soccer complex for another Western Conference action night as it's Phoenix Rising FC playing host to RGV coming off of a goal scoring bonanza against Tulsa in the midweek as Didier Drogba and company look to take down Junior Gonzalez's stingy side here in the desert tonight. Tyler Terrence along with the incomparable Devin Kerr and Devin will take a look at the playoff picture at the moment and right now Phoenix obviously fighting for that number four spot trying to get that home playoff game right now San Antonio down to the wire with Tampa Bay Tampa up 1-0 which bodes well for Phoenix yeah Phoenix have definitely been the benefactors of their great performances and and unfortunately lackluster in other squads but I'll tell you who's going to have a great performance here tonight and hopefully gain some three points for his squad is Kyle Murphy you're going to see Kyle Murphy all over the pitch he's going to be very active pushing that line of Phoenix as far back as possible he's got excellent 1v1 technical ability Dead ball set pieces, and oh, by the way, he's a pretty fine dancer, too. Absolutely. And the other side, a man who's done a little bit of dancing in his day, maybe not as eccentric as that, but Didier Drogba coming off of a brace, and obviously a legend in his own right. I mean, Champions League winner, obviously EPL a few times, and, you know, he just continues to compile all the accolades. Again, two great goals on Wednesday. Jason Johnson has two excellent finishes as well, and like you said, the barn burner, the 4-3 finish, and just nice to see him back out on the pitch and help his squad continue to move up the table. Scoring his first goal since back in August, August 5th, almost two months without a goal for Didier Drugba, obviously dealing with that hamstring injury. Now for Junior Gonzalez is starting 11. Local boy Omar Ontiveros is basically cracked his way into the starting 11 week in and week out. Yeah, signed back on May 5th, you know, played in Luxembourg for a little while, but Callie Brown in the back, very capable, and I'm not worried about the back line. The biggest question is going to be, can Todd Wharton and Emilio Garcia and Eric Bird hold down the midfield against the offensive firepower that Phoenix Rising continuously have sent on the field, which has pushed them into this amazing streak that we've seen. Kasner and Lucatero out wide, and then for Patrice Cartaron, business as usual, Drogba up top. Awako gets the start tonight after getting the night off, at least from a starting perspective. On Wednesday, Jordan Stewart, along with Peter Ramage at the back line. Yeah, they gave Rambo a little bit of break last week, but Rambo back in the lineup. I'm going to do Dia actually outside on the left, which is interesting, but again, Drogba going solo up top, Awako in the middle, Watson and Hamilton mainstays in the midfield. Very, very impressive. And again, Jason Johnson, the speedy Jamaican, is going to give the back line of RGV a tough task this evening. Johnson, of course, a brace in the last game as well, along with Didier Drogba. Phoenix looking to climb up the Western Conference standings once more as they take on RGV. We'll have all the action next. savings and style live comfortably together and right now the selection has never been better just look at this three-piece Sonoma Shea sectional only $599 and this urban casual four-piece bedroom just $499 visit Pruitt's for the lowest prices and best selection Alma School and Ray or Thomas Road and 34th Street Pruitt's proudly serving the valley for 65 years Phoenix Rising FC is pushing towards the playoffs with more goals, more wins, and more clean sheet shutouts than ever before in club history. Don't miss the final matches of this historic season. So, get your tickets now before they sell out. Saturday, October 14th, against Portland Timbers 2. Receive a free Phoenix Rising team photo. Phoenix Rising FC, our team is rising to the playoffs. It's all about the food. You really need to have a passion for what you do and a passion for food. The Big Kahuna. It's 12 ounces of ground beef, topped with some cheddar cheese, lettuce, tomato, homemade pickle. I mean, it's just a huge meal. I believe in a scratch kitchen because I'm passionate about the food that we serve our guests, and I love seeing people enjoy the food that we create. 
Welcome back, everyone. You're watching Phoenix Rising FC as they prepare to take on Rio Grande Valley FC. And for those of you that watched the game last Wednesday, it was a very exciting game. Six goals scored in less than 20 minutes. However, for Coach Patrice Carteron, he wasn't very excited about it. After the match, he talked about how he wasn't happy with the team's spirit. He thought there was some res residual effects from the team's loss over in Sacramento. He thought that after the team had clinched the playoffs so early, that some of the players may not have been working as hard as they should have. However, after the team went down to nil that work rate went right back up and team are winning 4-3 so I don't think they're going to be making that same mistake again as they seek to get their first win over Rio Grande Valley. Back to you guys. Thanks Jose. Obviously Phoenix might have taken off taken their foot off the gas a little bit defensively but offensively Devin they looked as good as ever on Wednesday night. Yeah and again a little bit of ebb and flow back and forth a nice little 4-3 shootout which can provide a nice little spark into this feeding rising squad not that they necessarily need another one the streak that they've been on as of late is absolutely amazing and and they put them all the way back into the fifth spot or excuse me all the way up into the fifth spot I should say for a while they were on the cusp of a playoff appearance hovering around 10 9 and 8 but again done a great job and continuing to rotate people in and out but not shy of goals not shy of opportunities and this these fans aren't shy here either absolutely we are underway from the phoenix rising soccer complex as didier drugba and company look to make it two on the week a huge three points against tulsa and back into the win column they obviously had that 11 match unbeaten streak snapped by sacramento republic but they came back in emphatic fashion but here's an early opportunity for rgv as it looked like kasner might have been taken down outside of the box the referee says play on well and you know Obviously, you want the three points and the positive result to begin with, but yet alone the fact it was against Tulsa and getting that win, they've now distanced themselves, giving them six points with two games to go. You know, Tulsa sitting at 46 points, Phoenix at 52, and now they're just laying chase to Swope Park and possibly even San Antonio trying to move their way up. Hey, you never even know that maybe they can snake by Reno, but again, there's just two games left, six points to be had, and I'm sure Patrice Cartron. Jason Johnson, Didier Drogba, and company are looking to gain as much as possible coming down the stretch. Well, bad news for Phoenix fans. San Antonio, who was down 1-0 to Tampa Bay, and the team that obviously Phoenix is chasing, leveled things up in stoppage time, and that game finished in a 1-1 draw. So a huge point for San Antonio FC as they're trying to keep Phoenix at bay. But either way, it's been such a great turnaround for Phoenix since the arrival of Patrice Carteron and, Pat and Didier Drogba back into the lineup on a consistent basis with the exception of the injury and the time that he missed. Phoenix has done such a good job of finding what their niche is and running with it. Well, and, and interesting, I think it's great to see their, their tactics change week in and week out because they're using the same personnel, but they're doing it in a different manner and they're having success doing so. So it's going to be interesting with Carteron coming down the stretch and going into the playoffs who he's going to use where in what manner because we see a lot of similar faces but like I said the tactics team to change but no matter what they're getting the victory so three points nonetheless and it provides a lot of issues uh, good issues rather for Patrice Carteron because there have been so many guys who have stepped in and produced for him and produced extremely well that now he's gonna have to make the decision well who do I start in the middle of the park is it Sam Hamilton you know is it possibly Blair Gavin depending on the night is it Kavon Lambert is it Matt Watson all these are going to be decisions that he's gonna have to make in the most important time of the season well and, and I think one decision that he hopefully doesn't have to make is what kind of environment are we gonna go into are we gonna be able to move up and grab one of those top four spots to gain a home playoff game Bill you able to win a corner for RGV the first of the evening for either team and it will be in favor of this RGV side which obviously hit a big rough patch in the middle of the season they're eliminated from playoff contention but this is a side who has tied Swope Park beaten San Antonio and beaten Reno in their last three games you know this is one of these teams who sort of had the weight lifted off their shoulders and they've been performing brilliantly when head coach Junior Gonzalez will tell you the biggest thing for them is consistency Elio Garcia into the box. There's an early header for Kai Green. Josh Cohen able to hang on to it. But obviously Phoenix want to tighten up a little bit in terms of defensive marking and just defensive minded in general because the last game that they played, there was just acres of space for Tulsa to be able to play through them. They were just fortunate that they had one more goal in them than the other team on the night. And again, that's where we talk about how Phoenix is exactly going to approach each and every opponent because you see them change from game to game in each situation where everything is shifting in a different manner not not necessarily in a negative one but like last game very wide open game back and forth 4-3 four, finish the results prior to that were a little bit Vasquez into the box and Cali Brown will hang on to that a bit more restricted in play they kind of sat back a little bit more picked and chose their opportunity so you know Carteron has the ability to move pieces around but I don't want to say you never know what you're going to get but you almost don't because you know they come back and they sit back play this 
relaxed, defensive-minded, possession-oriented game. And then the next thing you know, Drogba and Johnson decide they're going to open up the floodgates and drop four on, on Tulsa. Absolutely. Milo Garcia finding in the middle of the park. How about that for a sliding challenge from Matt Watson? And, you know, obviously most of the attention is drawn towards Drogba, towards Jason Johnson, who's on top of it now, working on Justin Bilyeu. Able to hang out to I mean, this is just a player who's playing with an immense amount of confidence. No look for a Waco. Johnson trying to win it back. Here's TJ Kasner. He's been involved in the RGV attack, which has looked stale at times throughout the course of the season, but seemingly found the rhythm with a couple of huge wins against two of the top four teams in the Western Conference, San Antonio and Reno. Both 1-0 wins, both shutouts. Escalante, the game winner against San Antonio. Bill Yu, the game winner against Reno. And most recently, a 2-2 draw against Swope Park Rangers. Holland and Murphy with the tallies in that affair. Great ball forward, but coming off of his line. Well, and for RGV and Omar, or excuse me, Junior Gonzalez, my apologies, he'll tell you that, you know, I, I started to reference the consistency earlier. They have the ability to play with the best. They also tend to play down in certain situations, which is something you cannot do at any level, yet alone at this league. Last year, could put goals away almost on cue, on demand. Absolutely amazing. They actually ended up the year plus 23. I mean, any team that's sitting plus 23, not only are they going to the playoffs, you're probably sitting in a top three spot. This year, as you and I are chatting right now, negative nine goal differential. So, you know, they started off the year, only allowed a few goals in the first eight games or so, had one of the top ranked defenses. And then from there, like you said, it's kind of been a slide and a frustrating roller coaster ride of, of lackluster performances and I think Junior Gonzalez is going to be more than happy to close the season out and, and get it going next year and you know play off of Houston and, and what they both have to offer each other going forward. Well this is a team who got to the playoffs last season they fell to Oklahoma City energy in the first round and then Oklahoma City would eventually fall to the Vancouver Whitecaps too who actually are going to fold up their side next season but you know this again a team who have some experience have some young guys but but we did a couple of their games earlier in the season where you know they were drawing LA Galaxy to a team who currently sits you know close to the bottom of the Western Conference table but again are getting results against San Antonio and Reno so it just speaks to the consistency aspect of it but they're coming here to Phoenix in front of a great crowd in front of some you know playing against some extremely extremely talented players Drogba one of the few and it's it's just it might be a trap game for Phoenix. You know, you hate to use that word, but at the same time, this is a team that a lot of teams have overlooked throughout the course of the season. You'd hate to see Patrice Carteron's side do the same. Yeah, 100%. I mean, to put things in perspective, RGV with a performance tonight, gaining three points, puts them at 39. That's right up the cusp of the playoff line. So, so they are right there. You know, again, you said the consistency issue. That's obviously the biggest thing. And I think, you know, Junior Gonzalez struggled in midseason because some pieces were going up to Houston, some pieces coming down. A lot of moving parts that were integral pieces to his team just weren't there on a consistent basis from a performance standpoint, yet alone the right personnel. So, you know, he'll go back to the drawing board and he'll have another opportunity to continue to push this squad forward. And, and I think that they'll have good things in their future. Ty Green has his cross cut out. He's been a bright spot for Junior Gonzalez throughout the entire season, outside back from Jersey City. Set at Seton Hall and nearby South Orange. Eric Bird. Bill you linking up with Emilio Garcia. Bill you once more. Sliding it through for Murphy, but how that challenge from Rambo. And it will be a corner for RGV once more, their second of the night. Peter Ramage, the, the ever present Rambo in the back line, sliding over, making a good tackle. And, and see, just talking about the way that Phoenix plays and they change from game to game, in the first eight minutes, we've seen them play a high press so far, holding RGV in their own defensive third to now. Sitting back a little bit more, you know, giving up a little bit of possession, and, and they have no problem doing it. Garcia had a bad ball in. Free header for Magales. It looks like the last touch came off of a Phoenix player. It'll be another corner for RGV just on the other side. And that's someone who Phoenix is going to have to keep a real keen eye on tonight. Magales so amazing in the air. Corner kicks and set pieces. Actually, the last time this squad played, he was able to tie the game up in the closing moments. Extra time nodding in a way for a 1-1 draw, and it was off a header coming from a corner kick. It's Christian Lucatero, 20-year-old from Pasadena, Texas. Clips in the corner again, not a bad ball once more. Comes back out, Garcia having a rip, not a bad effort. Cohen sees it go wide, but Emilio Garcia showing a little bit of flair there. It's 
see the clearance by Phoenix come in off that restart. Unfortunately, ball cleared to the middle of the field. Emilio Garcia trying to make lunch of it. And with all of the attention drawn towards the attacking front for Phoenix, and even more so the middle of the park, the job that Matt Watson and Sam Hamilton have done. But how about Josh Cohen? I mean, on that road trip, able to come away with four clean sheets with the exception of the 2-0 loss against Sacramento. And he's somebody who could possibly be up for, you know, USL Player of the Month. Yeah, and even in that game versus Sacramento, I was on that call, and Sacramento just had two pretty phenomenal goals. You know, they had a, a dead ball restart, free kick, bent into the upper 90, great finish. And then they had a blast from about 25, 30 yards out. A little bit of poor defending by Phoenix. I think they were caught off guard by the fact that he actually took the shot. I believe it was Kiffy, if I'm not mistaken, uh, involved in one of those. But either way, you know, the back line is pretty consistent for the most part. But I, I think that most integral pieces on this team that do not get enough credit, and, and you mentioned them initially, were Sam Hamilton, Matt Watson, and also Blair Gavin, who's on the bench tonight. And I just think those guys really do run the show in the middle of the field and enable the rest of the squad to play off of them going forward. Look at the strength from Owako. Vasquez trying to get forward. Ends up falling for Murphy. Nice little ball out wide for TJ Kasner, who's found himself on the near left side. Kasner, 1v1 with Gibbons. Todd Wharton will come back out for Justin Bilyeu. Bending it in behind the defense. Not a bad ball, teasing Cohen a little bit, but it's out of bounds. Going to be a go kick for Josh Cohen. And that's something from Justin Bilyeu that RGV is going to want on a regular basis here this evening. He's very dangerous left-footed player coming up the flank, and you'll see him take players on and and look to play in that triangle combination with the left side of the field. But, you know, he'll knock those bending balls into the back post all day long if Phoenix will let him. Stewart and Ramage at the back for Patrice Carteron tonight. Duigi Mala getting the night off, and he has filled in brilliantly, sparing Jordan Stewart and Pete Ramage throughout the course of this last third of the season or so. And again, more decisions for Patrice Carteron to have to make heading down the stretch. But all good problems to have for the French manager. I'm sure the, the boys in the locker room aren't, aren't too frustrated with the fact that, you know, Carteron's going, oh, let's see, I'm the skipper and I have to play who this evening? You know, <laughs> you're not, like you said, they, they've got so much talent on the field and, and onto their bench. And that's nice when you're going on these long runs and you know, coming off their Pacific Northwest stretch where they had to go all the way out there. A lot of travel, a lot of attrition on the body, mental difficulty, and speaking of difficulty, Kyle Murphy having a difficult time on the ground right now. Pete Ramage upset with something. Meanwhile, Kyle Murphy is down. We'll take another look at it. Yeah, I think that's just a solid 50-50 tackle by Rambo. Kyle Murphy landed a little awkwardly on his back, but Decent challenge from the veteran back. Murphy motioning to the RGV bench. They might need some attention. See if Murphy will be able to continue or restart, though. Phoenix with having the ball. Twelve and a half minutes played here at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. A couple of half chances early on for both sides. But no score just yet. Tyler Terrens along with Devin Kerr. Glad to have you with us on this wonderful evening in the desert here in Phoenix. Awako. Good sliding challenge from Emilio Garcia. Here's the Ghanaian once more. Matt Watson. Slipping it through for Johnson. Johnson, one-on-one, -on -one, tries to go over Brown, but Brown able to make a good save. And it'll be a corner for Phoenix, their first of the evening. And there's one of my personal favorites, Matt Watson, getting in on the act. And just great tackle, excellent possessor of the ball. And look at the distribution in behind the back line, behind Justin Bilyeu. And Jason Johnson does a good job for the most part. Unfortunately, his last touch fails him. You can see his frustration as he turns around there. And wish he had that one back. Phoenix should be up 1-0. Trying to get it on that patented left foot. That scored a couple of brilliant goals. The second one from essentially an impossible angle. I mean, you look at how Fabian Serda was positioned on that goal, and the only place that it could possibly have found the back of the net was between that little spot between his legs, and he was able to find it. Awako on top of the corner now. 
Doesn't get past Murphy. Vasquez trying to go back for Owako. Murphy with a sliding challenge. He looks to be laboring a little bit after taking that shot to the back. It's not something that Junior Gonzalez is wanting. Going to want to see 15 minutes into the first half. You don't want to see it at all, yet alone this early in the match. Jordan Stewart. It's Englishman Jordan Gibbons playing catch with Pete Ramage. Waco brings it down beautifully. Johnson. RGV doing a good job of clogging up holes for Phoenix to be able to play through and forcing them into a turnover. Yeah, Jordan Gibbons with backtracking there and knew exactly where that ball was going to be played, but his feet got tied up underneath him and just slipped a little bit. Well, we've seen this a lot from this RGV team throughout the course of the year. Obviously, they haven't gotten the results that they've needed being eliminated from the playoffs mathematically, but they have this sort of innate ability to be able to just frustrate teams to the point of, you know, creating turnovers in their own defensive third. Well, and much like Phoenix, they kind of lack an identity in the grand scheme of things because they morph into different roles depending on who they're playing because they can move the ball on you. I mean, they're talented. You've got Kyle Murphy, Luca Taro, Eric Bird, Todd Wharton, you know, obviously Bird Morton, national champs at UVA, and, and they're capable of possessing the ball. But then again, sometimes they're just lulled to sleep by their own tactics and, and aren't able to complete a full 90 minutes. I think that's the biggest thing is not able to put in a full effort in an entire match. Good ball in for Bird. Comes back out wide. Lucatero. 1v1 with Vasquez. Vasquez showing him the byline. Nice skill from Lucatero. Sends it towards the back post. Cohen off of his line. Gibbons nods it away. And TJ Kasner will see it out of play. He had no problem showing him the end line. Lucatero, good player. But an extremely strong left foot. And he showed you right there. That's exactly what he wanted to do. Put it on his left foot. TJ Kasner whistled offside. Again, Jason Johnson coming off of that fantastic brace against Tulsa. Got the equalizer, and then the eventual game winner to make it 4-3. A little bit of a lazy pass there from D on the outside. And again, Phoenix surrendering possession. You can see the man in charge, Didier Drogba, not exactly thrilled with the way his team's playing in the attacking third right now. Yeah, they're not very crisp in their efforts so far. You can see some movements going forward and you know guys are bouncing ideas off of each other but they're just need to tidy things up be a little bit more efficient hamilton able to win it back for phoenix drug but beautiful turn looking for jason johnson brown off of his line takes a deflection johnson pointing to the corner and it will be a goal kick for rgv i mean didier drogba 39 years old and he just has a pirouette stop on a dime in the middle of the park plays a cheeky little ball into jason johnson i'm surprised it didn't go in for a corner but again you can see the the genius's mind at work in plays like that and it's very impressive by didier drogba it's got to be nice for young guys like jason johnson to be involved in something like that as well you know drogba unfortunately on the back end of his career but just being involved in different ways and for a young gentleman like jason johnson who's already got the talent general yet alone to be mentored by someone like didier drogba really is a feat in itself well it's the week in week out the tutelage that he receives from didier drogba even when drogba you know might have been over in chelsea i'm sure they're texting and you know having a running conversation about what might be going on on the field different ways to sort of get involved in the attack how you can keep defenders guessing i mean for jason for a guy like jason johnson who attended vcu had a great career there 
and we've seen his game elevate on a week-by-week -week basis. And you have to imagine that it's just a running dialogue with Didier Drugman to have that sort of mentor by your side and to guide you through these early years of your career, it's priceless. Well, and head coach Patrice Cartron from Phoenix has said, you know, the role that Drogba has taken on, though he may not be able to perform in the same way, shape, and form he did 15 years ago, he's still a vital piece to this squad in so many different ways, and that he's also taken on this mentorish role where he's willing to give up his time and his efforts to, to give them the tutelage that these players need at such a young age. And the likes of Jason Johnson, I mean, again, so talented, but you have seen his game progress. You have seen him get better over time to where you, he used to just be a little bit of a linear player, a lot of speed down into the channels, wanted to push him down to go with pace, to now you're afraid to give him any space whatsoever, no matter how closed off the environment, because you feel like he's going to beat you every single time he gets the ball. And just to go to show the type of attitude that Didier Drogba has with this entire thing is Jose Bosch asked him after the game on, you know, after the game on Tulsa, like, how good did it feel to be back out there as Phoenix commits a foul? And, you know, did it, did it hurt you a little bit to see your team playing so well and you not being able to join in on the fun? And he said, I loved it. I loved every minute of them being able to succeed with me on the bench and me not being there on the field because it shows that we're growing as a team regardless of whether I'm there or not. And I think that shows the maturity of a player to be able to say that as well because there are few men out there who will openly admit to you, hey, I have no problem playing this role right now as long as we get success. That is a humbling experience in itself and, you know, kudos to him for that. A walkout. So the 1-2 with Dia, but Awako unable to find the penetrating pass. As well to try to win it back. Almost 21 minutes played, Devin. What we expected so far? Uh, again, it's hard to say <laughs> because of both squads and the way that they change. Uh, I've actually been a little bit more impressed with the possession by RGV. Uh, but I think both squads are kind of still trying to find the right positioning and, and what role they're going to play in the match tonight. As you see Drogba showing his... Going for glory here, but he's only going to find the Banditos. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> but again, showing you that he's still capable of that move. Looked up, saw Cali Brown off his line. Um, yeah, I think RGV has done better than expected, and I think Phoenix is status quo for the most part. Dia, round the defender. He's got numbers in the box. Amadou Dia sends it in, waiting for Drogba, but he couldn't get the touch right. Didier might want that one back. It was a great ball in from Dia, but there was some traffic in front. Yeah, Didier Drogba, I think Didier thought that was going to fall to the likes of Gladson Iwako and caught off guard and by surprise when it dropped onto his left foot. Not that he has the greatest left foot. <laughs> But you can see, yeah, I think he thought it was going to go to Waco, and his timing was off. He was already in the air, coming down on the ball, and just confused and bewildered how that chance escaped him. I'm sure he'll get another one the rest of the night. Just a couple. Just a couple. Ramage with a strong header. Drogba brings it down with some world-class technical ability into the path of a Waco. Jason Johnson, former VCU Ram, looking for a seam. Drogba stepping in, looking to return for Dia. It's one of those where the, the mind's working faster than the body, couldn't keep up. Look at the work from Matt Watson to track back and win the ball back for his side. Many given night a professional soccer player with the exception of the goalkeeper is running anywhere between six and nine miles you have to imagine that Matt Watson is probably on the latter end of that well, Matt Watson that odometer just tick 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 all night long I mean he is extremely impressive and I said I, I think he's easily one of the most integral pieces to this squad I really like him in the middle of the field and he's so dangerous in so many ways a little bit of miscommunication there between Amadou D and Victor Vasquez RGV will claim possession now Eric Bird. Number of University of Virginia products on this RGV side. Callie Brown, Eric Bird, and Todd Wharton all played for the Cavaliers. 
one of the more storied programs in Division I college soccer. We've also got the Clemson contingency and Kyle Murphy and TJ Kasner. Solid ACC products. Here is Kasner working on Hamilton, gets around the first defender, now working on Gibbons. Squares it back. Bird going for goal wasn't a bad idea. Referee claiming that Cohen got a piece of it, and it will be a corner for RGV, their third of the evening. Now speaking of the ACC, link up TJ Kasner doing a good job here. Nice little cutback, gets to the end line and plays it back to Eric Bird. Bird going for the top corner, but back a little bit too much. Ball whipped in, Cohen off of his line, and he picks it off. Attention Phoenix Rising fans, it's time to celebrate a rich tradition with the Dia de los Muertos scratchers tickets from the Arizona Lottery. Play for a chance to win up to $10,000 instantly on three unique tickets designed by a local Arizona artist. Visit your favorite Arizona Lottery retailer to play. It's Jordan Gibbons. Going to start it outside back tonight for Patrice Cartaron. Vasquez and Cody Wakasa have really been the mainstays at the fullback position. Vasquez, good ball in. Jason Johnson going to be able to keep it in play. Could be on here for Phoenix. Johnson back into the mixer. Didier trying to bring it down. Great back heel for Dia. Dia! Couldn't find anything but just a brief glimpse into the infinite amount of talent that Didier Drogba possesses. And Drogba right there, that's what just makes me feel absolutely horrible about myself. <laughs> <laughs> how that's impressive, such a negative way of looking at how it. How <laughs> impressive he absolutely is. I mean, that is an extremely difficult thing to do with no one standing around you, yet alone with three players closing in. Vasquez on the overlap. Another ball sent in, but over the head of everybody. Johnson again will be able to get there and keep it in play. Twisting and turning, going for goal, and it just fizzes wide. It would have been another acute angle attack for Jason Johnson had that gone in, but it just goes wide and remains nil-nil. Speaking about feeling bad about myself, Jason Johnson just put me in reality check once again for his capabilities. I mean, wow. Justin Bilyeu is having a rough time with him out there today. Jason Johnson tried to pick up that upper 90. Two plays in the span of two minutes. Johnson was able to free himself up. Jason Johnson currently leading this Phoenix Rising team in the goal scoring department. 12 goals on this season. Getting number 11 and 12 on Wednesday against the Tulsa Roughnecks. And getting a huge three points and getting this side back into the win column. After a terrific stretch and a great Cascadia road trip, getting tripped up by Sacramento, but then being able to perform midweek. RGV just trying to slow things down, maybe sensing danger was on the horizon after the past couple of chances for Drugba and Johnson alike. Orton finding Lucatero. Quick switch over for TJ Kasner. He'll work on Gibbons. Lucatero. Now wide for the New Jersey native Kai Green. Brazilian Magalhães going out wide for Justin Bilyeu. RGB being patient here, just trying to pick apart Phoenix methodically. Trying to lay it off for Murphy, wasn't a bad idea. Rambo cleans it up. Still loose in the middle of the pitch here. Awako can't get to it. Magalhães fighting his way through. Kasner. Clever ball through for Murphy. Murphy trying to win something out of it. 
But it's a goal kick for Phoenix. Yeah, I'll tell you what, on Phoenix's side, they need to recognize that Ivan Magalhaes is pushing so high. That's their center back coming all the way up to the top of the pitch. And the referee making the decision now that it's going to be a corner. We'll take another look. I mean, the ball gets played into Kyle Murphy. Takes a terrible touch in front of him, and I'm, I'm not really sure where the deflection he saw as he now maybe points back. And we've reversed it to a goal kick. Yes. So going back to my point that Magalhaes is pushing so high in those situations, Gladson Awaka was working, trying to get the turnover, but Phoenix, as he pushes up the field, pounce on him, throw numbers at him, because then they offset the back line. Then you go with speed, you knock a ball to Johnson into the channel, let him go one-on-one, -on -one and you got Drago and support. Jordan Stewart along for Victor Vasquez. Look how high the fullbacks get. For Phoenix Rising. Hamilton on for his counterpart, Watson. Jason Johnson, Awako trying to find Gibbons. Gibbons back towards the back post. Drogbo is trying to line up the volley. Almost end up catching Kai Green more so than the ball. An impressive ball movement from Phoenix, though. Saw come down into the corner, right to the top of the box, played back out, swung in. Nice fluidity to the game up top tonight. Well, at this point on Wednesday, we already had six goals. That's it. So on behalf of everybody at Phoenix Rising FC and RGV, I apologize for the lack of goal scoring. I think they just know you've been a busy guy working and they wanted to save your vocal cords. <laughs> Didn't want to wear you out too early. I doubt that that's the case. <laughs> the fans here at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex always in full voice, no matter what the scoreline reads. Bird. The first time pass for Murphy had plenty of room to play. Yeah, well done by Rambo tracking back though, and then smarts to have the right vision, the wherewithal to play back to Cohen to clear it out and restart. There are the Bandidos. Always having a spectacular time here in the desert. Kasner looking for an option. And Gibbons taken down from behind. Okay, another look here is Gibbons chasing down in the corner and Kyle Murphy realizing he immediately making a mistake, lending an olive branch to help him up. Ramage. Looking to pick out Diet. Well defended by Magales. Good step from Ramage again. He's having a great match thus far. Disrupting RGV's rhythm in any way that he can. However, here's Kyle Murphy in some space. Murphy going for goal from distance, and Cohen had to make the save. Decent effort from Murphy, but it's going to take a lot much better than that to be Cohen from that distance. And that's frustration from the striker coming out because he's been isolated all by himself. Hasn't really had a lot of opportunity tonight. And, you know, he got a look at goal and he's going to take it. Josh Cohen definitely had it covered. Awako. Great ball over the top for Johnson. Looking to beat Billy, who's able to keep it in place. Still Johnson. Jason Johnson, my goodness! in some type of form. No matter what the scenario, you cannot count this man out. 1-0 the Phoenix. Well, I guess it's never too early to start celebrating. The Bandito's getting in on that. Jason Johnson showing his love for the home fans. Again, Jason Johnson going one-on-one. -on -one. Bill, you're having a real rough time. Little shaky and tricky as to whether or not that actually crossed the end line. But either way, Jason Johnson continues. RGV steps off a little bit. 
and credit to him, the one-on-one -on -one skills, the speed, the ingenuity, and the vision, and of course, the goal. Jason Johnson, a pleasure and a sight. A baker's dozen on the season for Jason Johnson. And if you thought he wasn't going to be able to outdo his goal from Wednesday night, well, it might just have a contender. The ability to keep that ball in play, and then the skill to be able to beat the next defender and then just blow it past Callie Brown. Jason Johnson just continues to dazzle not only the Western Conference, but the United Soccer League certainly has their eyes on Phoenix Rising FC. As they're going to be a team to be reckoned with come the postseason. And while all credit to Jason Johnson, you have to imagine Justin Bill, you figure that the ball was out of play because he essentially just stopped playing on the byline. Yeah, but as a defender, you can never stop. I mean, you're taught that when you're a child, playing until the whistle. And so especially at this level, you're professional, get it together, keep going. You know, I, Justin Billy has had his hands full all night long, and, and you know you've been beaten. You've got to continue to backtrack. But you also, you expect support from your center backs to slide over, and both of the center backs just kind of sat. Neither Magalhães nor Kai Green, who was on the other side of the field, stepped over. Omar Ontiveros was isolated as well. And when you get beat as a defender, you expect them to slide over. They didn't, and Jason Johnson took full advantage of it. Kasner almost able to equalize if he was able to get a cleaner first touch on it. It rolls out of play. It will be a goal kick for Josh Cohen. Three goals in about a game and a half for Jason Johnson already. A brace on Wednesday night, and now a goal already. And he might have a second here. It looks like there was a foul before the ball went through. The referee not electing to blow his whistle. It looks like Awaka was still down. Junior Gonzalez is off his seat on the RGV bench, and he's making a claim. I think Gladson Awako took a very, very hard challenge there in the middle of the field. And head referee Luis Guardia is going to step in here, see the ball played in. Uh, I definitely thought it was a very difficult challenge. You know, Gladson Awako just continuing his run after he played the ball. RGV players slipped, just unfortunate to get the back end of that challenge, and he wasn't trying to go. They both just lost their footing a little bit. Well, regardless of whether or not it's by accident or on purpose, there was contact, and it prevented Awako from joining in on the play. Not a foul. Not a foul? Not a foul, not whatsoever. Gladson Awako had started his run. The player from RGV, I, I think it was Christian Lucatero, I couldn't see exactly in the middle of the field. I mean, you're talking about an ill-timed slip, and it wasn't impeding the play. It wasn't affecting his play whatsoever. Phoenix actually had possession going forward. I wouldn't have blown the whistle if it was me. There you have it, no foul. What a treat it is to be a Phoenix Rising FC fan, to be able to come out and see this level of football in the middle of the desert. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had something like this where I'm, where I'm from, you know, and unfortunately we don't. Something, something coming in the future, a couple years. We'll talk about that later on. But, yeah, I mean, it's awesome. And it, it's cool to be around an environment like this in general, yet alone with a team that's starting to acquire more and more success, has an awesome fan base, a phenomenal stadium, you know. All those things take into play the full effect that you get when you go to an awesome sporting event and deal with this amazing world sport. Garcia, clever play there, reverses field, finds TJ Kastner. Bill, you overlapping. Look at the defending from Jason Johnson. He can do it all for Phoenix. Now Awako trying to slide it through for Johnson, but just at his heels. Yeah, Awako should have played that ball outside to Sam Hamilton, and then he could have knocked it into Johnson himself.
Ramage with some work to do. Looks to clear it away. Johnson can't keep it in play. And as we are approaching the halftime whistle, more than six minutes plus stoppage time. Jason Johnson's terrific individual effort right now, the difference between these two Western Conference sides. Awako looking to sprint away from Wharton. Good defending, though, from the University of Virginia product. How about the step from Sam Hamilton? Watson just looking to hold it up. Nipped out from behind. No foul call, but Watson able to win it right back. Drugba. It's a little too short for the Ghanaian and Awako. Bird in tight quarters himself. It's a battle in the middle of the park. Phoenix ends up winning that battle. Amadou Dia was looking for his outside back to get forward, but Victor Vasquez hanging tight for the moment. Jordan Stewart. Dia turning in space. Gladstone Awako. He'll line it up. It takes a nasty deflection. Callie Brown will claim it. Yeah, again, excellent ball movement from Phoenix. You can see they are definitely not lacking confidence here this evening, continuing to push forward. And how about the effort on the defensive side of the ball? Push so high up on the pitch, and every single person working hard with or without the ball, going forward, coming back. It's been very impressive to watch. Well, it's a far, far cry from what we saw on Wednesday night. Oh, yeah. I'm sure although they gained the three points and ended up Edging out Tulsa, there were a few choice words in the locker room after that match. Waco taken down. And back to your point, Dev, I mean, it's really just an effort thing that, you know, the defensive side of the ball. There are tactics to that that are involved. And, you know, obviously, depending on the team, you're going to defend them a little bit differently, keep an eye on certain players. But at the end of the day, the defensive side of the ball is something that really just comes down to heart and, and pride. Yeah, and like you said, the, in the background, you're going to know what role you're playing and, and at what point in time you have to push and, and this, that, and the other. But if you're just sitting back, let him go, and, and a guy's three feet from you with the ball, I mean, at some point in time, you got to step up and make an effort. Get in a tackle. Get dirty. Get down. You know, do something. And I think sometimes the magic just isn't there, and I think that's what they ran into the other night. Fortunately enough, they got a couple guys that know how to put some balls in the back of the net, so they were able to squeak away with a 4-3 victory. Well, it's just very rare that normally midweek when the magic isn't there and you know, you're not at your best. We'll usually see sort of a 1-1 watching the paint dry or nil-nil game. But, you know, to see an offensive outburst like that in a midweek is, is very surprising. Vasquez sliding it through. Can Dia get there? Puts the brakes on. Work to do. Kai Green comes over. It'll be a throw in for Phoenix. Well, it's surprising to see play like that and then an almost an exact turnaround this weekend. You've got a defensive stalwart in your entire squad who's played so well in the first 45 minutes. And going forward, you know, they haven't been able to convert all their chances, but I mean, RGV has had a couple glimpses here and there, but for the most part, they're backtracking the entire match. Dia claims it in a decent area. It's going to be a foul, however. Rising FC just with one more game next week on October 14th. 7.30 Pacific time, 10.30 Eastern time against Portland Timbers 2. And that will do it for the 2017 USL regular season. Seems like just yesterday we were back in late March starting up what was going to be a great United Soccer League campaign. And now here we are on October 7th. And it's all about to come to an end, or it's all about to start, depending on the way that you look at it. Yeah, I think uh, Junior Gonzalez would probably have a few choice words for you in that situation, <laughs> but Patrice would be chomping on the bit and licking his chops, getting ready to send his boys into overtime here, grab a couple extra matches.
Here is the man in charge, Patrice Carteron. He's done such a terrific job taking over for Frank Yalop, who stepped aside, wanted to be closer to his family. He's going to take over the Fresno expansion side, which is also going to form a great partnership with the Vancouver Whitecaps and the MLS. And Patrice Carteron stepped in, implemented his style, or maybe perhaps found a style that works for Phoenix just by trial and error. And his team has certainly run with it and strung together a very good month or two of football that find themselves right in the middle of the pack in the Western Conference table. Getting word now, we'll have one minute of stoppage time. Dia able to win the ball back. Referee will say play on, at least for the moment. He's not going to go back. Watson with a decent challenge. Second ball falls for Bird. Eric Bird striding forward. Jason Johnson tracking back, but Bird's able to get it out wide. Lucatero looking to take on Vasquez, but Vasquez able to stand him up. And it will be a corner. You can see RGV trying to make a push just before half to maybe steal something. Josh Cohen organizing the troops before the final whistle before half. Look at Arrow on top of the corner. Just clips it in to the edge by there with a defensive header. It's a long range effort, but that's never going in trouble. Cohen. That might just do it for the first half of play. Not much to write home about for RGV. But writing the script as usual for Phoenix. Number 14, Jason Johnson with a terrific strike. About 10 minutes ago, and that is the difference between these two Western Conference sides. Phoenix going to make it two in a row and really finish off this last part of the season strong, as that's going to do it for the first half here in the desert. Jason Johnson's 13th goal of the season was a magnificent one, and that is the difference right now between RGV and Phoenix Rising. Devin Kerr, your thoughts? Yeah, impressive by Phoenix. I thought they ran the entire first half for the most part. I'd like to see them become a little bit more finesse in the final third and, and you know continue to push and, and get a second or possibly even a third goal on RGV side. I think they got to go back to the drawing board defensively and, and figure out how they can close up the space for the likes of Jason Johnson and Didier Drogba because they are having a field day up top. All smiles here at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. Jason Johnson continues to dazzle the Western Conference. 1-0 at the half. We'll be back in just a few moments with stats, highlights, and a little bit more. Stay with us. Okay, one large popcorn, couple of drinks. That's 1575. Got this. What 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 are you doing? Oh, mind tricks. That's cute, buddy but you still have to pay. With Arizona Federal Credit Union, I can pay with my Apple Watch. I don't need cash or card. Stop. Arizona Federal provides mobile solutions when you need them most. You will upgrade your popcorn for a dollar more. I will upgrade my popcorn for a dollar more. Really? No. Arizona Federal, now that's the power of us. The Heineken family passed down a special gift, an original recipe with only three ingredients and all of them natural. I also have a special gift. The ability to cry on demand. It's beautiful. Only three natural ingredients. There's more behind the star. Hey, little man. I'm your new house. Come on in. This is going to be great. Watch what we can do together. Lights. Ta-da. Locks. Not bad, huh? Oh, and this. I've been saving this for you. You take care of the universe. I'll take care of you. Cox Home Life. Home security and automation. Phoenix Rising Football Club está luchando por los playoffs. Con más goles, más victorias y menos goles encajados en la historia del club. No te pierdas los últimos partidos de esta histórica temporada. Obtén boletos antes que se agoten. Sábado 14 de octubre contra Portland Timbers 2. Obtén una foto del equipo Phoenix Rising Football Club gratis. Phoenix Rising Football Club. Nuestro equipo se levanta hacia las finales. 
Halftime here at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. Jason Johnson's 13th goal of the season right now. The difference between Phoenix and RGV here in the desert. And right now, we're going to take a little look at what's been cooking with Phoenix Rising FC. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Phoenix is an optimal choice for uh, MLS expansion. Phoenix on my arm. The further on my arm. The new stadium that they built in a big 52 days, which I think is an all-time record. Philip. My name is Peter Ramage. So I'm Mar Bravo. My name is Didier Drogba. Phoenix Rising SC. Phoenix Rising. Ah, Phoenix Rising. Phoenix Rising. Phoenix Rising FSA. Phoenix Rising FC. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We cannot be bystanders. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. We can warn someone when their drink isn't safe. And disrupt the situation. We can. Get someone the cab. Or walk them home safely. We can make campuses safer for our friends. Our roommates. Our, our classmates, classmates. Our, our fellow, fellow human, human beings. beings. We cannot be bystanders. We can. Intervene. It's on us. All of us. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. As we enter the final two weeks of the 2017 USL regular season, the playoff race is coming down to the wire. In one of the final games of Week 28, the Charleston Battery claimed the point they needed to clinch a spot in the postseason through Evio Cordova's late equalizer, which earned a 1-1 draw at Ottawa Fury FC. Another sellout crowd at Popper Murphy's Park of 11,569 fans saw Sacramento Republic FC close out its home slate on a high note Saturday night with a 2-0 victory that ended Phoenix Rising FC's 11-game undefeated streak. With the win, Republic FC now needs just one point to claim a fourth consecutive trip to the USL Cup playoffs. At the top of the Western Conference, Real Monarchs SLC struck early in the second half and twice before the final whistle on the road to down Reno 1868 FC 3-0 to put one hand on the USL regular season championship. One more point is all that's needed for the Monarchs to claim the first silverware in their history. One of the scores for the Monarchs in Reno was Chandler Hoffman, who is again firmly in the middle of the race for the USL Golden Boot with 16 goals this season. Everyone is still chasing Reno 1868 FC's Dane Kelly, though, as the Jamaican continues to lead the way with 18 goals in what looks now like a three-player race that also features Hoffman and the Charlotte Independence's Enzo Martinez, who also sits on 16 goals. With two games remaining for all three players, the award remains up for grabs as the regular season nears its conclusion. For USL Network, I'm Morgan Conklin. Hmm. Maybe
maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunter. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Beautiful moon here in Phoenix. I guess that's the moon everywhere, right? Something like that. Regardless, we're at halftime here in the desert in Arizona. Phoenix Rising FC with a 1-0 lead over Rio Grande Valley Toros FC. And we'll take a look at some of the best moments from the first half. That certainly wasn't one of my best moments. But early on, it was Phoenix Rising knocking on the door. Jason Johnson as busy as ever. Yeah, and, and I think Justin Bilyeu was going to have an issue with whoever played up top tonight, yet alone the ever so present Jason Johnson. He got in behind him quite a few times specifically three <laughs> and he went one for three in that opportunity and you know, he ended up you know 33 percent put away one goal not bad and, and this is an opportunity the ball played to the back post and again jason johnson going one-on-one -on -one, whoop right around justin Boyu gets to the byline cuts it back thought he was going to pick out the top corner unable to do so so that's two and that was in the span of about four or five minutes that he wasn't able to convert and we'll take another look at just the razzle-dazzle that Johnson possesses, almost able to score another sort of impossible angle type goal. But that man would not be done in the first half. He just sort of generates his own chances as the match progresses. And we'll take another look at a couple of more Phoenix opportunities here and there. And this was the big moment, Devin. He was able to keep it in play. And Bill, you basically just stopped playing. And Jason Johnson says, I'm going to thump it home. Yeah, that's the no-no. Again, we reference it. you got to play until the whistle. The head referee is going to make the decision. He has a nice little conversation. Can't believe you put that away. But again, Justin Bill, he's got his hands full on the outside. Jason Johnson, super smart. How about the ball from Watson played into the corner? You know, we talked about Matt Watson and his ability to be so available on both sides of the ball and help his team out. And Jason Johnson just used that amazing Jamaican speed that he has, chased it down, and continues this amazing form he's on. And here are the stats from the first half. Obviously, there weren't a ton of RGV highlights in that little package right there, although they have had a little bit more of the possession, but most of that in their own defensive third, just sort of hanging on to it. They're trying to find any sort of way of break down this Phoenix defense, which has looked a far cry better from what we saw on Wednesday night. Well, I think the problem for RGV is, so both teams are playing a, a 4-5-1 hybrid type of lineup. You know, RGV will say 4-1, 4-1, whatever it is. RGV is exposing themselves with their outside backs, trying to get up the field, especially with Justin Bilyeu. And when he's tracking back, you see Jason Johnson getting in behind him. If RGV wants to have any success going forward, they need to tuck it in, compact themselves, and then attack outward. I wouldn't change anything for Phoenix. I think they've done great. You just le like to see them convert a little bit more of their chances and, again, extend that one nothing lead to push to 2, to 3, and continue to, to show force in this match. Second half right around the corner. Stay with us as we'll be back in just a few moments. It's all about the food. You really need to have a passion for what you do and a passion for food. The Big Kahuna, it's 12 ounces of ground beef, topped with some cheddar cheese, lettuce, tomato, homemade pickle. I mean, it's just a huge meal. I believe in a scratch kitchen because I'm passionate about the food that we serve our guests and I love seeing people enjoy the food that we create. At Pruitt's, savings and style live comfortably together. And right now, the selection has never been better. Just look at this three-piece Sonoma Shea sectional, only $599. And this urban casual four-piece bedroom, just $499. Visit Pruitt's for the lowest prices and best selection. Alma School and Ray or Thomas Road and 34th Street. Pruitt's, proudly serving the Valley for 65 years. 
Phoenix Rising FC is pushing towards the playoffs. With more goals, more wins and more clean sheet shutouts than ever before in club history. Don't miss the final matches of this historic season. So, get your tickets now before they sell out. Saturday, October 14th, against Portland Timbers 2. Receive a free Phoenix Rising team photo. Phoenix Rising FC, our team is rising to the playoffs. Second half just right around the corner as the fans here at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex trying to entertain themselves while the festivities are at a halt. The players getting a well-deserved breather, including Jason Johnson, who has the game-winning goal at the moment and another spectacular goal for Jason Johnson. Tyler Terrence along with Devin Kerr. And Devin, we'll take a look at the Western Conference playoff picture. This was entering today. A couple of updates that we don't have on here. Tulsa Roughnecks were able to get three points and clinch with a win over Seattle Sounders 2. Colorado Springs switchbacks barely keeping their hopes alive as they were able to take down Sacramento and obviously San Antonio FC picking up a point as well. Yeah, and unfortunately for Orange County, they're on the, the worst half of a 2-1 drubbing right now with Reno. So that's going to be a valuable three points for Reno, continuing to distance themselves from Swope Park in San Antonio. Obviously, Swope Park taking on OKC tomorrow night, that 6 p.m. matchup. That's going to be a huge game. But again, both sides, the Eastern and Western Conference standings coming down to the final game to see exactly who's going to play where and when. Well, it's interesting how the two conferences compare. It's really sort of the top half that has all these sort of movements in the Western Conference. A little bit of the same in the East, but it's more so the bottom half of the East and the last sort of two or three teams along with the players, you know, the teams who are on the bottom half of the line that are jousting for those final spots. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing going into it is you pretty much, you know that, in my opinion, I think Sacramento and OKC is probably going to get in again. Colorado Springs making a, a late push for that and, and trying to secure that eight spot. But, you know, you're going to have to go to Real if you're OKC. And again, it just comes down to the home playoff game for me and your seating for that. And, you know, when it comes into Swope ending up in the third position or San Antonio in the fifth because Phoenix jumped, whatever it may be, the way the points play out and this, that, and the other, the home game is really what it's all about. And, you know, unfortunately, the bottom half of that table is going to go have to the, going to have to go on the road to get the job done, and that's very difficult to do when you've got these rough environments like Phoenix Rising has. Absolutely, and it already seems like Phoenix sort of know who their opponent's going to be. It's going to be San Antonio. It just depends on whether it's going to be in the desert or it's going to be in Texas. So, we are underway here in the second half, and Phoenix just continuing their fine form. If you're Patrice Carteron, you have to be thrilled with what was going on on the defensive side of the ball compared to Wednesday. Anything offensively that you might need to change your tweak coming into the second half? Finish. That's it. You just got to finish. Uh, I think they've done a good job breaking down RGV going forward, and you just have to take advantage of your opportunities. I think they should just continue to push. I thought they've done a good job going forward and back, but at the end of the day, you just got to finish. Amadou Dia committing the foul. Lucatera taken down. It's a pretty clean first half. Not all that physical between these two Western Conference sides. Amadou Dia. Had some great delivery from out wide, but wasn't really able to truly connect with anybody in the middle of the box. RGV trying to find some sort of rhythm or just something to break this Phoenix midfield as well as their back line. But the boys in red have done a superb job of clogging up holes in the middle of the field that were gaping against Tulsa midweek as Matt Watson gets called for the foul. Matt Watson obviously frustrated with the call. Going back to the playoff picture a little bit, Devin, you know, it seems like it's going to be Phoenix and San Antonio, and that is a very intriguing matchup because both teams love to counter and, and don't love being on top of the ball for the majority of the game. And sometimes when you're put in situations like that, they don't materialize. They kind of fizzle themselves out, and it ends up being a, a lackluster, slow, lethargic, ball-moving match that you sit back and go, how did we get here, and how do how does all this talent on the field turn into this? And, and hopefully it doesn't, but yeah, it, 
again, it goes back to Patrice Cartron and, and his ability to move the pieces in the puzzle and, and see exactly what fits best for, for the matchup that is in the future. And we only need one of those. So Josh Cohen will toss one aside. Now we can see RG RGV just coming out of the gates, just trying to press Phoenix, maybe get them out of their rhythm. But I think that Phoenix would be happy to see RGV press because there's going to be space up top for, for Johnson and Drogba to operate. Yeah, if I'm Junior Gonzalez, that's not the tactic that I'm looking to employ here in the second half because I think Phoenix would eat them alive and just exploit all the space that you're going to open yourself up to. I don't think that RGV has the discipline to consistently be able to push like they're doing right here and have a su success. Drogba coming out wide for Dia. Watson shielding off the defenders, somehow able to keep possession of the ball. And then Watson eventually taken down. Phoenix bench asking for a foul, and they shall receive. Again, Matt Watson showing his force in the midfield and just how delightful it can be for him to exert his skills on this match. Picking up a little knock at the end there. He's usually the one delivering the knocks. Yeah, he is not someone that I would want to go into 50-50 <laughs> with, I can tell you that. He's got that big frame and just, it seems like he just kind of glides across the pitch and every single time his full force is going into those tackles. This man is certainly no slouch as well, Jordan Stewart. Him and Ramage certainly imposing physical statures at the back for Phoenix. Stewart just trying to clip it in for Dia. Brings it down for a walk out. And both teams just trying to find their bearings here. In the opening moments of the second half, Watson stepping forward again, this time getting called for the foul. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have any sympathy for Matt Watson on that one. He definitely got a little bit heavy with his foot there on Eric Bird. Eric Bird, a little bit of a frustrating first half for him. Wasn't really able to get anything going in the attacking third. Drogba dispossessed. Kyle Murphy. Pete Ramage called for the foul. Pete Ramage still arguing with the head referee, Luis Guardia. Letting Rambo know that he's not starring in his own movie here. He's got to settle down. There's some supporting actors that like to get in. Junior Gonzalez in the ear of the fourth official. Josh Cohen getting things organized with his two-man wall, consisting of Owako and Johnson. Todd Wharton on top of the free kick. Certainly from a ways out. Amadou Dia gets there first. Falls to Eric Bird. Bird sending it towards the back post. Didier Drogba's there defensively again to win the header. He's not afraid to come back and help out the lads. Certainly a big frame to be able to win the ball in the air. Yeah, he's so good in the air. And whether or not he meant to head that ball back to Josh Cohen, I'm going to give him credit for it because the performance here tonight would show that he knew exactly what he was doing. But, yeah, from his early days, he's always tracked back and was never one to shy away from a defensive effort. He's also scored a couple of big goals with his head, too. A few. Just there's one that sticks out in particular. It's against Bayern Munich. You remember that one? I, I do remember. <laughs> I do. Yes. Johnson goes to ground. Ilya eludes him for the moment. Still being fought for. Seems like there's a little bit better fight from RGV at the start of the second half here. Johnson hasn't really gotten in the mix yet. The opening six minutes. Kai Green. Back for Ontiveros. Luca Terra towards the back post. Not in a way, Johnson will help it along a little bit, but it falls for Wharton and RGV just making camp in Phoenix's defensive third. 
Yeah, and, and we talked about the ebb and flow throughout their matches, how sometimes they're willing to sit back and then they'll push and press on other times. I, I don't know if you remember, but at the beginning of the first half, they did this. They kind of came out and pushed in the final third right away. They played high tempo, high pressure, and then they sat back for about five or ten minutes and kind of gave RGV a little bit of possession, and then all of a sudden they flipped the switch, turned around, and started to push again. Sam Hamilton finding Dia. Lucatero commits the foul. The referee says play on. Now it's Didier Drogba. Looking to take on Kai Green. Drogba to the outside. Still Drogba. Green had to make the tackle. And Drogba just checking on the young fullback from New Jersey. It's well done by Kai Green checking back there. It can't be fun having to chase down the likes of Didier Drogba. And I think Kai Green they might have just bumped knees a little bit coming into that tackle. Fans here at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex waiting for something to cheer about in the second half. They certainly had a terrific goal right before the first half to cheer for, but not much since. Glatz and Iwako on top of it for Phoenix. Header from Hamilton goes just wide and a goal kick for Callie Brown. And as you see there, with the point against Vancouver Whitecaps 2, Real Monarchs have clinched the regular season title for both the Western Conference and Eastern Conference, and the USL Co. will go through Rio Tinto, so that is official. And should Phoenix make it all the way to the USL Cup, which is certainly a ways away, it will have to be. Right around Salt Lake City is Dia trying to cut it back. Good defending, though, from Magales. And Emilio Garcia just forced to dribble out of bounds. Owako. Good delivery. Drogba trying to bring it down. He's going to be offside. Solid service in Gladson Owako and Didier Drogba trying to make the impossible possible. If anybody's capable, he is. Just with the spin coming up off the pitch like that. Leaning across your body, leaning back. Very difficult to do. Good defensive work from Johnson. Keeps it for Phoenix to boot. Hamilton back for Johnson. Rewarding the man for his defensive efforts. Waco sending it out wide. It's a good ball. Gibbons getting forward. He's got numbers in the box. Gibbons, a decent ball in. Almost caught Callie Brown off of his line. Lucatero. Garcia overlapping. How many options for RGV? Eric Bird receives it, but tackled from behind by Jason Johnson. Points to the ball, and the referee agrees with him. A great tackle there by Jason Johnson, once again showing what a great, versatile player is, tracking back, helping his team out defensively. And for RGV, they have got to get something going up top if they think they have any chance in this game whatsoever, because as they're just pushing forward there. You saw the ball at Lucatero's feet, and Kyle Murphy almost running away as if nothing to do with the play whatsoever. And you mentioned not a lot of options. I mean, you're, you're 25 yards from goal. You're center forward. You've got no one in front of you. Lucatero's pressing towards you, and you, you can basically have a little 1v1, and he's stepping away from the ball. Drogba on the turn, sending it through for Watson. What a save from Brown. Back out for Johnson. Still Johnson, back for Drogba. Goes for the curler and another save from Brown. Callie Brown not having any of what Phoenix is offering. Still could be trouble here. And now RGV looking to go on the counter. Yeah, they're going to have to track back here. RGV has numbers. Bilyeu. Eric Bird sliding it through. Kyle Murphy being told to get up by the head referee. And once again, Phoenix imposing 
their presence almost at will. Didier Drogba taking all three players on, and what a ball in behind. Magalhães unfortunate not to get a foot on, and how about the save from Callie Brown? Watson stepping in behind. And then as the ball rebounded around, Jason Johnson playing a good ball to Drogba, who's trying to get a little cute to that back post curler. Once again, Callie Brown had it covered. Luca Tero finding the overlapping Kai Green. Looking for the early delivery. Vasquez sends it right into the path of Didier Drogba. He's got Johnson running with him. He chooses Awako on the left side. Gladson Awako into the area. Still Awako, but blocked by Ontiveros. Dia picking up the second ball. Good challenge from Kai Green. And it will be a corner. Or perhaps a throw in. Might have got on the left side of the flag. It did. Phoenix knocking on the door once more, looking for that second goal. Look at that back heel from Didier. But it is going to be offside, and you can see the frustration from Drogba. And he's telling his boys, Keeps your eye, keep your eyes open. You're literally walking a tight line when you're running into space like that, and you got to do a better job about curling your run, especially with the ingenuity Didier Drogba is showing us tonight. World-class form, very impressive. But it's tough for, if you're a Phoenix player and you're playing off Didier Drogba, I mean, he's literally turning his back to you, but he's still going to be able to find you. You should know. Yeah, I mean, but you <laughs> should know. I mean, you should know in general whether you've played with him or not what he's capable of, and yet alone the fact that you get to train with him on a regular basis, that he's capable of anything at any point in time. He's someone who you've got to you know, expect the unexpected, if you will. Well, the referee got involved. Sure he wasn't expecting that, and now a foul called against RGV. And like you mentioned before, Devin, RGV were floating in and out of the game a little bit. They were in it for a brief moment, and now it seems like Phoenix are on the front foot. Yeah, and I think the problem is, is that RGV, they were pressing, and they were trying to impose some of their will on Phoenix a little bit, but they haven't really changed their tactics, and they're still susceptible in the back, which we've seen consistently in the second half. We saw it in the first. And I said, you know, if they were going to have any success, I don't mind the high pressure like they're doing, but when you're coming back, you need to compact yourself because otherwise you're just leaving yourself wide open, and it's, it's giving Phoenix chances left and right. Hamilton with a bit of a heavy first touch. Could be bad here for Phoenix, but Kyle Murphy not able to clean up his touch. Strong header forward, Bird. Hit from Murphy. Tackle there from Pete Ramage. It will be a foul against Rambo. And a free kick in a very dangerous area for RGV. Rambo frustrated by Luis Gradia's decision there and taking Kyle Murphy to ground. So we're going to get another look at it here. And you see Rambo stepping in. Already got his hand on his back. And yeah, unfortunately, Rambo, you go to ground, buddy. You better get the ball when you're going to make an argument like that. A lot of times I've come to your defense. Unfortunately, I can't do it after seeing that replay, my man. This has to be on frame if you're RGV, no? I, I would think so. And, you know, previously they would have the likes of Todd Wharton to step up and have a shot here, or TJ Kasner. I can't see from the camera angle who it is. It is TJ Kasner. Kasner keeps it low. Not sure whether he intended to do that or not. Looks like it did take a deflection. It'll be a corner for RGV. Yeah, if I'm TJ Kasner, you obviously want that one back. You can't be cute with a player, goalkeeper like Josh Cohen, trying to pick out the far post and, and win a little low. But if you're going to go with that, you got to go with a lot more pace. See the frustration by Rambo and Didier Drogba on that free on that corner, and then there's another look at the free kick as it took the deflection for the corner. And again, TJ Kasner just trying to go far post, but did not put enough effort behind it. Lucatero, another good ball in, but there again for the defensive header is Didier Drogba. 
Eric Bird, his shot takes a deflection. It'll be another corner for RGV, and the frustration starting to mount for Phoenix Rising. But you see the captain, Didier Drogba, just trying to encourage everybody that, all right, it's just another defensive play that we've got to make. Yeah, again, it's, it, these continuous balls in and out, you get another look at RGV's head coach, Junior Gonzalez. When these things start to mount up, the last thing you want to do is let your frustration overwhelm you and like an erupting volcano. So just like you said, stay calm and, and continue to pursue. A little design set piece sent back in. Not a bad ball, but Drogba again with the defensive header. And then Glantz and Awako foul. Then Phoenix will be able to come out the other end. Good concentration from the boys in red. No goes yet for that man, Didier Drogba. Certainly been clever in the attacking third and trying to make things happen. Coming off of a brace on Wednesday night against the Tulsa Roughnecks. And a little Western Conference update for you. Reno right now up 4-1 on Orange County. And this team continues to be the most dominant offensive side in the history of the United Soccer League. Based upon all the results that we're getting throughout the night, Orange County slowly but surely watching their playoff hopes slip away and being pulled from their grasp. Jason Johnson finding his way through. Johnson trying to send it across. Magalhães got a piece of it and a corner for Phoenix. It shows you were good defending by Magalhães as well because Jason Johnson, when he took that touch, you saw him try to play it around Magalhães and Magalhães kind of impeded his run a little bit there. And it looks like Sean Wright Phillips, former Chelsea man himself, going to come on for the Ghanaian Gladson Awako, who certainly put in a nice shift tonight. He will exit in the 64th minute. Pretty lateral move for Patrice. Just bringing in some fresh legs to steady the ship and try and close out the final 26 minutes. And the referee just maybe demonstrating what he'd like Glatz and Awako to do in terms of exiting the field, but Awako, a veteran in his own right, going to take his time, milk the clock. And Glatz and Awako put on a nice show in the middle of the park this evening, and head referee just showing him where the end of the catwalk is so we can get his <laughs> night over with. And a round of applause from the Phoenix Rising faithful here at the Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. Glatz and Awako off, Sean Wright Phillips on. And that's just the sort of luxury that Patrice Carteron has with this roster. Drug by the corner end, free header for Ramage, and it's cleared off the line. Dia back for Johnson. Johnson wants more, still loose. Drogba cheekily back into the box, but Callie Brown off of his line, and Jason Johnson is down. And in some pain. Yeah, Jason Johnson trying to make a last-ditch effort and regain possession, went into a tackle, went to ground early. And I think he just pointing that he got stepped on on his foot and just, you know, that can be a real stinger, especially when you're not expecting it. Sometimes you can mentally prepare yourself for the battering you're about to take, but Jason Johnson obviously in an extreme amount of pain. You can see the ball bouncing around coming off Rambo's header. He had a nice free header. It's good defending by RGV. As Emilio Garcia is standing on the box, you see Jason Johnson just goes to the ground at the end and just unfortunately collides with Justin Bilyeu in the box. Johnson still writhing in pain. Still getting treatment from the medical staff of Phoenix Rising FC. He's going to try to get to his own two feet. And as much as Patrice Carteron wants to keep his team in proper form, get three points, and vie for that fourth spot, the most important thing heading into the postseason is making sure everybody's 100%. Yeah, you got to keep the health in check for sure. Because health is going to lead to happiness over the time frame that they've got left in the season and you would hate to see the likes of Jason Johnson be sidelined especially the form that he's in right now he has the lone goal on the evening back in the 35th minute it's an absolute beautiful shot 
able to blow past Callie Brown and beat a couple of defenders along the byline and kept it in play all in one motion. So he'll step off the field for a moment. We'll see if he'll be able to continue. You can see him at the bottom of your screen a little bit, just jogging off, and looks like he'll be okay. Hamilton holding off Garcia. That's well done by Sam Hamilton. Johnson back out onto the pitch. Looks like a substitute already getting set for RGV. Stewart a bit dangerous there. Goes all the way back for Cohen. Tavares clips it forward. Vasquez. This pass is cut out by Wharton. Through for Kai Green around Vasquez. Kai Green into the box. Skips all the way through. Now Glibbins will clear it away into the path of Didier Drugba, but Todd Wharton nipping at his heels with some good defensive work. Let's see Didier. As we approach the 60. Ninth minutes in, in its entirety, Didier Drogba lacking a little bit of the oomph and effort that we had at the beginning of the match. Maybe this night may be dying down a little bit. Patrice Carter on possibly bringing another substitution for him, I'm assuming. Bad giveaway from Vasquez. Luca Terro is away. Luca Terro, is he taken down from behind? The referee says no. Clean tackle from Victor Vasquez. My next question, Devin, do you agree with the call? Oh, my friend, do I not? <laughs> no, you know, I, I think we're going to get the opportunity to take another look. It was hard to tell at first glance. Victor Vasco is coming back, and Luca Tero, wow, I'll tell you what. If I had to give my initial opinion, I actually thought he might have been taken down, but upon further review, you see Victor Vasquez does a great job. And when he goes to ground, I thought he had taken him out because he was behind him, but you see him extend his foot out there and gets the tiniest little touch. Excellent tackle by Victor Vasquez. Very well done. A little more than 20 minutes remaining. Tyler Terrens along with Devin Kerr. Glad to have you with us here in the desert. Jason Johnson right now with the lone goal. Phoenix Rising looking to keep pace with San Antonio FC and maybe, just maybe, hope that they will slip up in their last two games. perhaps be able to claim that coveted fourth seed, which will see them host the first round of the playoffs. And now Francisco Ramos Pungo coming on. And he replaces Christian Lucatero for the remaining 20 minutes plus stoppage time. And I think that's Junior Gonzalez giving one of his boys another go at Solid Phoenix squad. Lucatero, pretty decent shift for him tonight. Drogba trying to return for Wright Phillips. Wright Phillips trying to keep it in play, but unable to. Looked like a flashback to a few years ago, Drogba to Wright Phillips. Well, I was thinking that, and I'm also thinking, man, what if, what if you're the likes of Kai Green? I mean, you're 23 years old, solid college career at Seton Hall, and I mean, they grew up idolizing these guys and you're expecting them to okay maybe move moved into management or coaching or something along those lines obviously Didier Drogba has moved into ownership and in, in, in its parts but he's still playing and you're going up Didier Drogba and Sean Wright Phillips I mean who would have thunk <laughs> I'm still in awe that we get to call these games Peter Amich. Vasquez looking to 
charge forward with purpose. Forces Watson to come back a little bit. And as a result, they turn the ball over. Pungo trying to get on the end of it. Good work from Ramage. Who has some words for the assistant referee. It'll be a throw for RGV deep in Phoenix territory. And another one of those moments where RGV are floating back into the game. Yeah, and Phoenix has resided themselves to the defensive third again. And Rambo could probably write a book with the amount of words he's had with the referees this evening. But, you know, it's something that Phoenix had to be careful of because when you've controlled the game for the most part for this amount of time, you're still only up 1-0. And that one little slip up, that's what you want to see them solidify in the back because you don't want that to happen. And you'd like to see them continue their offensive prowess that they showed in the first half. Ontivero striding forward, right? Phillips back defensively. Orton. Finding Bird. Plenty of space for RGV. High green. Working on Abadou, Abadou Diop. Little dink ball over the top for Bird. Looking to get around Vasquez. A great defending from Victor and a goal kick for Josh Cohen. And that's a situation where Eric Bird has got to use that body much better because referee's not going to blow a penalty in that situation. You're too close to the box. And, you know, as the ball heads to the byline, Eric Bird's got to stay on his feet, keep a stronger frame, and, and try and use his shoulder much better. But again, sounds like a broken record, but excellent defending by Victor Vasquez. At every Phoenix Rising home match during the 2017 season, two lucky fans will be upgraded to sit in the best seats in the house courtesy of Pruitt's Fine Furniture. These lucky winners will not only enjoy tonight's action in the most comfortable seats directly on the pitch, but those luxury reclining chairs will also be delivered to their home next week as a gift from Phoenix Rising FC and Pruitt's Fine Furniture. Who we got to talk to about getting one of those chairs up here? Every time I see that, I mean, it just looks amazing. <laughs> and the fact that they get those delivered to their home. It's amazing. We had the wrong ticket this evening, huh? <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily look at it that way. Nah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Battle against RGV, certainly in a precarious area. You're on the South Texas side of things. Didier Drugma on top of the free kick. That's never a good sign if you're Callie Brown. Be too tight of an angle for him to put it on frame, but you never know what a number 11's got in store. Well, at first glance, I thought he might be curling in, but I think he's going to hit this. He does go for goal. Brown spills it and it finds its way in. But nothing past this man. Time and time again throughout his career, Father Time has met his match, and it's Didier Drogba. Didier, Didier Drogba had no problem residing himself to the sideline, creating his own cheering section. And I said at first glance, I thought he was going to knock the ball in. But you saw him say, hang on one sec, steps back to the ball, realigns himself. And you can see the dip that he puts on the ball. Very unfortunate for Callie Brown, who had it covered. But again, that's just the manner in which you have to make saves against a man like this. And the way that he can bend and curl a ball, knuckling at will. A phenomenal strike, no matter what. I think he's very fortunate with the bounce coming off a of Callie Brown save. But again, Didier Jogba showing why he is who he is. And the Phoenix Rising are going to go up 2-0 in the 76th minute. Amadou Dia coming off, certainly put in a nice shift this evening as well. Alessandro Rigi coming on. And it's almost amazing how many options Patrice Carteron has coming off the bench. You bring on Alessandro Rigi and Wright Phillips in a matter of six minutes. It, it's sick to my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, good for them, though. It's And again, it's nice to, to have those options available. It's, it's even a, a bigger benefit when they're able to, to step in without missing a beat. I was actually quite surprised that they didn't bring Drogba off, but in light of the fact that he just sort of goal, I mean, I guess they didn't want to give him his curtain call just yet, maybe hoping for another one to delight the fans here in the final moments. 
Skips all the way through for Kai Green. RGV looking to get back into it. Good header from Sam Hamilton. Falls for Bird. Wasn't able to clean up his first touch. Trugbo away from Wharton. Still able to hang on to it. Certainly with plenty of confidence after scoring a goal like that. Ends up giving it away, but he's going to work to win it back, and he does just that. However, gives it right back. Eric Bird now. And he was taken down by Sam Hamilton. Now a dangerous free kick for RGV. You can see Didier Drogba raising his hand almost in disgust of himself. He worked so hard multiple times to win it back. I think maybe there's some tired, heavy legs that came into play after he was trying to redistribute it. You saw Eric Bird coming forward here and Sam Hamilton just stepping back. Not a horrendous foul, but a foul nonetheless. Eric Bird's another one who likes to step over a dead ball situation and have a go when he gets his opportunity. Certainly has the capability. We saw him on one earlier. Didn't necessarily go for goal. TJ Kasner was on the one that was a little bit closer. And you can see Wharton just to the, to the right. Emilio Garcia can hit these as well. And that's not a bad effort. It's off the crossbar. And right on cue, Devin Kerr, Emilio Garcia wasn't afraid to take a rip. And denied by the width of the woodwork. Jason Johnson can't get a full clearance on it. Bird, clever back heel for Ontiveros, but it's broken up. And numbers the other way for Phoenix. Alessandro Rigi leading the charge. Rigi. Hamilton trying to operate quickly. Now it's Didier Drogba on top of it. Drogba bends it in. And it looked like Wright Phillips might have taken a shot or was waiting for Jason Johnson to come through, but either way, RGV claim it. I think Emilio Garcia had Josh Cohen beat on that set piece. Talented youngster out of Tijuana. He's actually on loan from Pachuca. Been back and forth a few times. We're going to get another look at that free kick here a second ago. Amir Garcia, you see bending around the wall. And oh, definitely had the goalkeeper beat. And like you said, denied by the woodwork. And that young man's night is going to be done. Nicholas Perea coming on and replacing Emilio Garcia. Certainly a good effort from the youngster. Murphy going out wide. Good play here from RGV. Eric Bird taken down, but away from the play. Jordan Stewart maybe got the worst end of it. And the hold-up play here, seeing if Stewart is okay or not. He might need some medical attention. Yeah, Josh Cohen read that book. He saw the, the one-two that was coming in. The ball flicked over the top, and Eric Bird just don't really agree with his decision-making in that situation. You know, he wasn't going to be able to get to the ball and just takes out his frustration, just absolutely shoving Jordan Stewart in the back. I think his cleat kind of rode up his back calf near his Achilles as well. You can see him grabbing it there. Again, it's got to be difficult for the, these RGV players knowing that your season's over and you're not going to be progressing into the playoffs and you have to still go out, be a professional, and take on the likes of a Sean Wright Phillips and Didier Drogba, Josh Cohen, Victor Vasquez, and Jason Johnson, of course, and even worse when you go down 2-0, and yet you still got to close out the match. Well, Patrice Carteron didn't exactly look happy in that shot. Maybe a little frustrated with the play from Eric Bird just taking down Jordan Stewart. And now a man who sort of disappeared since the reappearance of Didier Drogba, Chris Cortez, who's no slouch in his own right. Jordan Stewart just walking it off at the bottom of your screen. We'll see if he'll be able to continue. Looks like Chris Cortez is going to come on. I was going to take a guess. You might think that he's going to come on for Didier Drogba, who played 90 minutes midweek. Yeah, that's definitely who I would assume the change would be coming for. Drogba's done his job for the evening, and in my opinion, no real reason for him to continue any further. Give Chris Cortez the opportunity to gain some Momentum heading into the playoffs. 
And Didier Drogba going to pass off the captain's armband to his former teammate at Chelsea, Sean Wright Phillips. And Didier Drogba scoring a magnificent goal from the free kick, a dipping and swerving ball that Callie Brown just could not keep out. And Drogba's night is done in the 82nd. Take another look. Yeah, Didier Drogba, I think he was actually trying to go back post on that and pick out that upper corner, but still decent effort put on frame and unfortunately just too much to hand over Callie Brown, that dipping ball. Knuckling of sorts and Drogba applauding the fans and, and their efforts and his performance this evening. Well done by Didier Drogba. Another amazing moment for the fans here at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex, getting to see this legend perform at this level. Chris Cortez immediately making his presence felt. Drogba with eight goals on the year, Jason Johnson with 13, and that seems to be the one-two punch for Patrice Carteron of Jason Johnson and Didier Drogba. Well, and just, you can see the camaraderie up top too. It's not just the fact that they're putting goals away, they are working off each other extremely well, and that's a dangerous combination to have that talent on the field, but to have that talent on the field, they almost have eyes in the back of their head and they know what one another are going to do. And that makes things very dangerous for them and opposing squads going forward. You can see Rambo stepping out and actually knocked that one out of the stadium. All the ongoers. Jason Johnson. Able to win this ball. Chris Cortez in the box. Johnson trying to slide it through for Cortez, but a little bit too short. And they're actually charging Callie Brown with the goal that we thought was Didier Drogba's. We saw a goal earlier today that probably should have been an own goal, but wasn't given as an own goal. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's a little difficult to tell. Sometimes I got to sit down and just ask whoever's making up these rules why they're doing what they're doing and who's depicting who's going on the score sheet and lineup card and this, that, and the other. Some of it I just don't understand. So Didier Drogba will remain at seven goals. Right, Phillips bending it in. Cortez almost had it, but Magalhães just shielding him off. To the 85th minute we go, five minutes plus stoppage time remaining here at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. Attention Phoenix Rising fans, it's time to celebrate a rich tradition with the Dia de los Muertos scratches tickets from the Arizona Lottery. Play for a chance to win up to $10,000 instantly on three unique tickets designed by a local Arizona artist. Visit your favorite Arizona Lottery retailer to play. Josh Cohen. Assisting the clock operator, letting him know that he has no problem with time of possession on his end tonight. Tonight's Rhesus Dental smile of the game belongs to Liz from Phoenix. Liz will get to take home a Phoenix Rising FC player head cutout as part of her prize. You could win the smile of the game, too. Just look for staff members with the large player head cutouts at the next Phoenix Rising FC home match. Reese's Dental, their focus is providing quality and affordable dental care and braces for you and your family. To schedule an appointment, head to Reese'sDental.com. Oh, I get one of those big cutouts. Who we gotta Do talk better. To? Who we got to talk to about that? Talk to our producer. <laughs> She'll be able to pull some strings now. Yeah, you would hope so. Magalhães might have brought that down with his hand. Referees this play on. Good sliding challenge from Peter Ramage. 
Yeah, just trying to see this one out. Eric Bird in some space. Jordan Stewart clears it away. He takes another shot. And Phoenix claiming that Eric Bird brought it down with his hand, but it was off of his chest. Or unless he claims that. Some choice words for Jordan Stewart as well. I think Jordan Stewart just a little bit frustrated because it's the second or third time he's been knocked late in a challenge like that. And unfortunately for Eric Bird, it has been him every time. Corner for RGV here. Trying to cut the deficit in half. It skips all the way across. Could have been dangerous for Cohen, but will be a goal kick. Just a few minutes left in this one. Jason Johnson and apparently Callie Brown, the goal scorers for Phoenix tonight. Callie Brown own goal was a drug but free kick from about a net of 25 yards out on a tight angle. Put it on frame. Callie Brown wasn't able to hang on to it. And ended up crossing the line. And again, it is that one-two devastating punch of Didier Drogba and Jason Johnson, which continues to give all sorts of problems to every team in the Western Conference. It's right, Phillips. Johnson on the ground. He's already received medical attention once tonight. See Jason Johnson. Going around once again, grabbing the other foot this time. All three subs have been used by Patrice Carteron tonight. See Jason Johnson in agony and pain, just pointing to his ankle once again. You got to wonder if he kind of turned it around a little bit. A couple guys have been slipping and sliding around the pitch. Maybe just some loose footing underneath him. As we'll utilize the world's most magical spray that works for about 30 seconds. Johnson, 26 years old, again from Happy News, Jamaica. In his first season with Phoenix and having quite a year. He's a former VCU Ram in 2012, Atlantic 10 Player of the Year in 2012, Generation Adidas. And a player who was recognized at a very early age with loads and loads of potential. And he's starting to make good on that potential. I think Jason Johnson has also decided to acquire stock in the grass and pitch here this evening. Taking some home with him for keepsake, I'm sure. He rocks it. Killing it. I mean, I hate to break it to you, but you couldn't pull that off. I couldn't pull the grass look off, no. <laughs> Especially since I cut the hair. You know, I used to rock the man bun like Eric Bird, but young lady told me that had to go. <laughs> so now I stand here before you a changed man, no longer a grass collector. Three minutes of stoppage time here at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. 2-0 lead for Phoenix Rising FC. Tyler Terrence along with Devin Kerr. Glad to have had you with us. And if you're just joining us, you've missed a couple of good goals. Rigi. Cortez holding things up. Now here's Wright Phillips in plenty of space. Maybe one more left in Phoenix. Wright Phillips trying to go around Magales. Look at the pace from Wright Phillips around the keeper, and it's just wide. What a nightcap it would have been for Sean Wright Phillips had that gone in. But not this time. And Junior Gonzalez is livid on the sideline. Been in the year of the fourth official all evening. Maybe just frustration being pent up from what's been a rather disappointing season for a side that made the playoffs last year, albeit lost in the first round, Oklahoma City Energy FC, but maybe expected to be in a much better position than they are right now, already eliminated in the second to last game of the season. And they have not been able to find the same magic that they have in the past three games, tying Swope and beating the likes of San Antonio and Reno. Yeah, again, you've seen some some solid spells of possession and flair on the offensive side, but some more flair. Good ball through for Eric Bird. It's going to fall for Wharton, trying to set up a shot. Goes for the curler. What a save from Cohen. 
And that's the kind of save that can preserve a clean sheet. He's fired up. And so is the crowd here at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. It remains 2-0. Yeah, the, the dead ball that Emilio Garcia hit a few moments ago. I thought maybe Todd Wharton was going to step onto it, but he shows you right there why he's such a great holding midfielder and has great command of the ball. Picking that out with his left foot. And what an absolute phenomenal save by Josh Cohen. Denying Todd Wharton in the closing moments of this game. I mean, what a great job. He's going one-on-one -on -one with Jason Johnson. Pulls it on his right, back to his left. Hits a curler to the back post and just... Josh Cohen absolutely throws his body horizontal to make that save. A little less than a minute left in this one, and Josh Cohen can bet your bottom dollar that he wants a clean sheet. Chris Cortez trying to get around off to Veros. Look at Kai Green coming in. He's playing to the last minute. Josh Cohen continues to be an unsung hero for this Phoenix Rising team. All of the attention and all of the hype on the attacking front of this star-studded attacking third for Phoenix Rising FC. But the man between the sticks has been equally good for Patrice Carteron. And he certainly deserves his credit as well. And that's going to do it full time from Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. Back to back wins after getting tripped up by Sacramento. Drogba and Jason Johnson integral in the win once again for the boys in red. And it's another huge three points as they look to keep pace with San Antonio FC and vibe for that home playoff game. Johnson with his 13th goal of the season. Drogba, a bit controversial whether it was his or an own goal, but either way, it's another three points for Patrice Carteron. And Phoenix Rising FC all smiles once again here in the desert. Devin Curry, your thoughts? Yeah, classic from Phoenix Rising. You know, I was really happy to see them pick things up in the latter portion of the second half and uh, controlled the first, controlled the second. Could have been three, four, maybe even five nil. Uh, RGV, unfortunately, going home. Season almost over, one game left for them. But again, Phoenix Rising are continuing to exert their force and their offensive prowess moving in here and into the playoffs. Eighth clean sheet of the season for Josh Cohen. Two nil win for Phoenix Rising. FC will be back in just a few moments with post game. This is Contour from Cox. Cable TV reimagined to get you right to the good stuff. La familia Heineken ha dejado un legado especial, una receta original con solo tres ingredientes y todos naturales. Yo también tengo un don especial. La habilidad de llorar cuando se necesite. Bonita, ¿no? Solo tres ingredientes naturales. There's more behind the star. Phoenix Rising Football Club está luchando por los playoffs. Con más goles, más victorias y menos goles encajados en la historia del club. No te pierdas los últimos partidos de esta histórica temporada. Obtén boletos antes que se agoten. Sábado 14 de octubre contra Portland Timbers 2. Obtén una foto del equipo Phoenix Rising Football Club gratis. Phoenix Rising Football Club. Nuestro equipo se levanta hacia las finales. Welcome back, everyone, to Phoenix Rising FC, where the club has just defeated Rio Grande Valley FC 2 0 with goals from Didier Drogba and Jason Johnson. I'm here speaking with Matt Watson. And Matt, you guys won your last game, but you had some defensive struggles. So, what did you guys do between the two games to tie things up and get a clean sheet tonight? I think communication was probably our biggest key. Uh, I think in the first half of last game, the communication wasn't there. We were kind of all doing our own thing, and so we wanted to be one unit. I think that was important to be strong. And we, we said, like, it doesn't matter if this game's nil nil, you know, we're preparing for the playoffs now. So we wanted to make sure our defense is solid. So we played that first, and then, you know, obviously the offense is kind of a more creative process, and you kind of play more freely. But we just focus on defense first, like, talking, making sure we're shuffling across together. Patrice had mentioned they thought maybe you guys had gotten a little complacent after you clinched the playoff spot. Did you guys feel that, and did you guys time things up between these two games? Uh, 
I mean, it's hard to say you're not complacent, you know, because you know you're in, and it, obviously it's very difficult for us to catch the team ahead, but it's obviously not the mentality you want. You want to go into the playoffs uh, with the same momentum we've been having the last games. You don't want to go into the playoffs losing the last two games and be on low on confidence. So it was definitely something we talked about, and it was definitely important for us to, like, treat this like a playoff game. We basically treated this like a playoff game. Like, this is a one and done, and if we don't win, we go home, and that's how it has to be from now on. And only one loss in the last uh, 13 matches going into the playoffs with one more regular season in the game left to go. How are you guys feeling? Very good, you know. I think the luck we didn't have in the first part of the season, I think I mentioned that before, like, we didn't have much luck, you know. We had these chances that weren't going in, and, like, with Didier's goal tonight, the luck seems to be coming. We're obviously got this chemistry now which makes it a lot easier to play I kind of know what guys are going to do and so you know you just got to play with the guys to work that out and we've just found it in the perfect time and if we just carry this into playoffs we should give it a good run all right thank you very much congratulations I'll let you celebrate with the fans Phoenix Rising FC defeats Rio Grande Valley FC 2-0 here and with one more game left to go at home back to you guys thanks a lot Jose great interview as always and fantastic scenes here at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. What a hot ticket it is to be able to see this team as they have time and time again proven that they are worth the price of admission. And as Jose mentioned before, just one loss in 13 games. We'll take a bit look at the best moments from the 90 minutes and right off the bat, Phoenix Rising FC knocking on the door as they always do. Yeah, they did very well. And then this was a consistent thing that we saw throughout the night. Jason Johnson trying to get down that right-hand side and, and go one-on-one -on -one with Justin Billion. Bill, you had his hands full and unfortunately had his pockets picked all night long too. Jason Johnson had his number and had a few opportunities in the first half, consistently getting around back behind the back line and, and that actually ended up leading to their goal. Jason Johnson, his time would come after he wouldn't be able to put that away, just spinning away from the defense here and not able to put that one away, but that would be a brief glimpse of what was to come in just a few moments. Yeah, it was the second opportunity. The third one would come a few moments later, but again, Pretty much the same thing that you saw all night on that right-hand side. Jason Johnson just using the quick prowess and quick strike ability. Great ball in here from Matt Watson. And, and watch him here. He gets him to the byline. Just one tiny little touch. And unfortunately for Justin Billy, he did not play till the end of the whistle. And Jason Johnson had no problem teeing that up and just having a crack at it. A baker's dozen on the season for Jason Johnson. The former VCU Ram just continues to impress everybody in the United Soccer League and beyond. The Jamaican in some type of form and just continues to get it done. Another look. It was right at Callie Brown, but the pace of the shot, he just couldn't handle it. I mean, you're hitting it from point blank rage. And, you know, unfortunately, Justin, that you beat all night long like a drum on that left-hand side. And, you know, your center backs, Magalhães and Ontiveros did not slide over to help out. And, you know, Phoenix able to go up 1-0. And then how about this double save from Callie Brown to keep his team in the game? Yeah, I mean, again, Didier Drogba turning on a dime in this ball. Very fortunate that it doesn't go, uh, Magalhães doesn't get a touch on, excuse me. And then Matt Watson just having to dig in Callie Brown. Had a pretty decent night making save after save after save. Like you said, the ball bounced around a little bit, comes back out to Drogba. Tries to hit that little shot to the back post, and Callie Brown able to make another nice save and keep his team in the game. Callie Brown was not able to keep this one out. However, they credited it in own goal to Callie Brown, which might be a little bit harsh, but at the end of the day, Didier Drogba again instrumental in another Phoenix tally. When you brought up Callie Brown, part of that UVA contingency who was on the field tonight for RGV, and Didier Drogba gave his first look, thought he might knock it to the back post. Second look has a crack at goal, and Callie Brown just could not hold on to it in the spin. The dipping, everything causing frustration and ends up in the back of the net. And then how about Brown's counterpart on the other end, Josh Cohen. He was not going home without a clean sheet tonight. Yeah, Josh Cohen, very fortunate with the woodwork save with Emilio Garcia's free kick just moments before that. Todd Wharton and putting on the left and, you know, a phenomenal effort tonight by Josh Cohen in goal. And here is an updated live look at the playoff situation on either side of the Mississippi River. We'll take a look at the Western Conference. Obviously, it looks like it's going to be Swope Park right now, but with the games in hand and everything like that, it's probably going to be San Antonio and Phoenix. Given how Swope finishes off, they play OKC Energy tomorrow, which is a desperate team and need three points just to remain above that cut line. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. And like you said, there, there's so many teams that are interchangeable. We have a pretty good idea of who's going to end up in the playoffs. We just don't know where. And I'm sure Phoenix would be love to continue their run and jump up into that fourth and final spot to get a home game. Absolutely. You can see some great matchups all around in the Eastern Conference and Western Conference, but still one more week of United Soccer League to go as this has been a terrific season and Phoenix Rising FC are peaking at the right time. Their last regular season game, their last home game of the season, potentially October 14th at 7.30 Pacific time. 
against Portland Timbers 2. Another phenomenal evening of football here in the desert. Jason Johnson and Didier Drogba proved to be too much to handle for anybody in the Western Conference once more. Johnson is 13th, Didier Drogba didn't get credit for the goal, but Callie Brown did. 2-0 to Phoenix here at the Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. Thanks for tuning in, folks, and we'll talk to you soon. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent from the United Soccer League.